Okay, continuing the series, and in this particular video, I'd like to talk to you about tenant routed multicast in the context of multi-site orchestrator. So what am I going to show you in this video? Well, I'm going to start out really simple, and I'm going to set up a very simple example of IP multicast. So this is not yet routed multicast, and this would follow standard BUM forwarding rules, but I just wanted to show you that's where I'm starting. Because in my second example, I'm going to show you tenant routed multicast, so layer 3 multicast, but in this particular example, showing you source specific multicast. And if you recall, SSM doesn't require you to configure a rendezvous point. In my third example, I'll continue on with layer 3 routed multicast. In this case, I'm going to be using PIM, but I'm going to be using what's called a fabric rendezvous point. This is something that Max talked about in his lecture series. Okay, so here's my lab. Again, this topology should be familiar. Nothing has really changed, but there are two things that I'd like to point out here. The first is that I had upgraded my ACI fabric uh, to ACI 5.0.2 and my MSO to 3.0.2. I did that in the last video, but I wanted to remind you here that one of the reasons why I upgraded was because in order to do fabric rendezvous point with multi-site, you need to be on ACI 5. The other thing I want to point out here is in order to do fabric RP in the context of multi-site, we need to designate border leaves to sort of act as our rendezvous point. And you can see here I've designated leaf 103 in site 1 as my rendezvous point for that site. And then in site number 2, I've designated leaf 2101 as my fabric RP for Barcelona. Okay, in this very first most simple example, what I'm going to show you is IP multicast in the same subnet. This is the case where BUM forwarding traffic rules apply. So technically, we're not really routing multicast, even though the multicast packet does have an IP header, because you see here my uh, stretched EPG, where my multicast source and my multicast receiver, they're both in the very same subnet. Okay, after my IP example, I'm going to turn on source-specific routed multicast here. So in this case, we see our familiar tenant brown stretched across both sites with a VRF V1 stretched across both sites. In this very simple example, I've created a stretched BD and a stretched EPG where I've got two endpoints. I've got 192.168.4.10 on the left, and this will act as my source-specific multicast source and then you can see the uh, uh, guy on the right at 4.30 he'll be the source specific multicast receiver and I'll show you all of that working in the context of MSO and then for my last example I'm gonna leave my stretched BD and EPG there because we can use them and so show you that we can do layer 3 routed multicast here uh, in this case I'm not using source specific multicast but I'm actually going to do PIM with fabric rendezvous point here. So some additions here. If you notice um, under the EPG clients in Amsterdam, I've got a new guy there at 192.168.1.10. He is going to be my multicast source in that particular example. On the right, you can see in EPG servers Barcelona that I've got a multicast receiver on an entirely different network. So I can show you the routed part. And then I'll go ahead and leave uh, my guy in the stretched EPG at 192.168.4.30. And I'll also make him a regular old multicast receiver. And we'll see that uh, tenant routed multicast traffic will be able to reach all of those listeners from that source using Fabric RP. So with that being said, let's actually get to the part where I show you this working in my Fabric. Okay, so starting out with my layer 2 multicast example, you can see I've got my two EPs that live in the stretch EPG that I showed you earlier. Now I've chosen to use a free tool called iPerf. I'm using iPerf version 2 because I don't believe iPerf version 3 actually supports the full multicast feature set. So be careful in the version that you use if you should decide to test with iPerf. Okay, so here we go. I have straight layer 2 multicast. These guys are in the same bridge domain, same EPG. Uh, so what I've got here is I have my listener on the right here, and I'm using the command iperf, you can see on the screen. So I'll go ahead and get that guy ready to go listening for multicast packets. So far, nothing is being sent, because what I need to do is in my multicast speaker, actually start a flow of traffic, which I'll do with this command. So you can see I've connected. And if we go back to the listener, we can actually see that we're receiving uh, multicast frames. Now, what's happening? How is this multicast working at layer two? Well, this is standard 
uh, bum forwarding rules, and this is something that Max had mentioned in his lecture. So nothing special here. This one was actually quite easy. But let's actually move on to the second example where I show you source-specific multicast. Okay, so here I am logged into my MSO, and you can already see that I've got my schema and my tenant in place, and it looks exactly like the drawing that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now, in this example of doing tenant routed multicast, but using source specific multicast, what do I need to do in MSO to make that happen? Well, if you remember, I have my tenant brown and a VRF stretched across both sites. So here I am in the template called common items, and I'm going to click into the VRF called V1. And on the right in the uh, configuration panel, you can see that there's a box called layer three multicast. We're going to go ahead and enable that box. Now, you're going to see it also ask you to configure a rendezvous point here. Now, in the case of source-specific multicast, we don't actually need a rendezvous point, so I'm not going to configure one. There is one other setting here that we have to make in that um, we need to tell Multisite Orchestrator all of, the, all of the bridge domains that should participate in this multicast setup. So I'm going to click on my BD stretch here, and it's, you can see it's a layer two stretch uh, with bum traffic allow. In this case, I also need to click the layer three multicast box. Um, that's really all I need to do in the context of MSO. So I'll go ahead and deploy these changes to both of my sites. Uh, and that's the multi-site orchestrator config. But there is one other setting that we need to do in each of the sites in order to complete the configuration for SSM multicast. Unfortunately, at the current moment in time with the version of MSO 3.0.2, there's a setting that we need to make that is not exposed in the UI. This will come, I'm sure, very quickly in a later release. But for now, the change that I need to make has to be done at the bridge domain in each of the sites in APIC itself. So here I am in the APIC managing site one Amsterdam, and I'm in my tenant Brown. And you can see I've clicked onto my bridge domain, a BD stretch here. And as you look in the middle, all of the configuration options, there's one thing here that we need to add manually, and that's under IGMP policy. Right now, there isn't a policy set. So in this case, you can either choose an existing policy or make a new one. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the common default policy. Now, the question becomes, well, what exactly is in this default policy? Well, just like most uh, parts of the APIC UI, if you see this little blue icon, you can click on it and actually see the policy. So there is one change we need to make here. We need to actually enable IGMP version 3. Note that is not the default setting, so we need to enable it here and submit. Now I need to do the exact same thing in the APIC managing site 2 Barcelona, but since the steps are identical, I'm not going to show it, but just assume that I've already done it. Okay, so let's go back now and test our two uh, multicast uh, devices, our endpoints here. So you can see the one here on the right is set up as the multicast SSM receiver, the listener. Notice the command has changed a little bit. So I had to add the option of minus capital H and actually specify the source. That's the source in the source specific multicast sort of way of thinking here. So I'm going to go ahead and get him ready to receive. Just notice that when you see the output here, there's uh, an extra line that says joining multicast and it gives you S comma G and it gives you the proper details. Uh, he's listening. So let's go back over here to this guy on the left and let's go ahead and have him start sending multicast traffic. Now, as you can see here, he's sending multicast traffic. But if we look at the guy on the right, the receiver, he's not receiving any multicast. So what's actually going on here? Now, I made that mistake on purpose because I wanted to point out a common misunderstanding and that Max mentioned in his lecture. Remember that when we start to do tenant routed multicast, that we will decrement the TTL twice across the sites. So in this particular case, what I need to do is I need to use a command that sets a higher TTL. So in this case, I'll send that traffic again, but with a TTL of 10. Now it's bigger than I need it to be, but it's just something greater than two. So um, I'll go ahead and get him ready. So we've still got this guy over here listening, and we'll go ahead and start sending that traffic again, source specific. And we can see that traffic is in fact showing up 
and the receiver were receiving traffic just fine. So I wanted to point that out so that you don't make the same mistake that I made when I was practicing for this video. Okay, moving on to our final example. I want to now show you tenant routed multicast, but using the feature called Fabric RP. So what do I need to do in MSO to make that happen? Well, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to establish a Fabric RP. And if you remember earlier when I turned on tenant routed multicast in prior examples, I did something at the VRF level. So clicking into the VRF V1 and looking over in the right configuration pane, if you remember when I turned on layer 3 multicast, I had the option to actually configure an RP. So in this case, with Fabric RP, I, I need to do that. So I'm going to just go ahead and make up an address uh, for my example. You will, of course, pick an IP address that makes sense for you. But my RP will be 1.2.1.2, .1 and then the type we need to set to be Fabric, and we'll click Save. That's the only thing we need to do at the VRF level, so we'll go ahead and deploy that to sites. Now, there is some more configuration that we need to do in each of the sites of Amsterdam and BCN. So the, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell MSO any bridge domains uh, that should be participating in this multicast example. So I'm going to click down into BD AMS, and just like before, I'm going to click the Layer 3 multicast uh, enabled box there for that bridge domain. Now, there is one other thing I need to do for Amsterdam. Because my multi-site source or my speaker actually lives in Amsterdam, he lives in this EPG called Clients AMS, there is one setting that we need to do here and only here. So clicking on the EPG and scrolling down, there's a, a box that says Intersite Multicast Source. We need to tick that box, but only in the EPG where my source actually lives and, and nowhere else. So that completes the configuration part for Amsterdam in MSO. We'll go ahead and to deploy to sites just like normal. Now we need to do uh, almost exactly the same thing for Barcelona. In this case, we only need to touch the bridge domain and tell MSO that this particular bridge domain should also participate in layer 3 tenant routed multicast, and we'll go ahead and deploy to sites. Now, there is one other setting that we need to do to make this Fabric RP thing actually work. In the current version of MSO 3.0.2, um, we don't yet have the ability to do that in the UI of MSO. We actually have to make that final setting in, in each of the Apex of the sites that we're working with. So what am I referring to? So when we want to do Fabric RP, in order to make that happen, we need to designate a border leaf to take on that function, take on that job. When we enable the uh, Fabric RP, we need to effectively create a loopback on those border leaves that will act as the RP, and then everything's going to work. So let me actually show you what that setting looks like and what you need to do in each of your site's APICs to make that work. So here I am in the APIC managing site Amsterdam. And if you recall from prior videos, I had you know built some layer three outs. And so I'm clicked into the layer three out called uh, INET West. And in the uh, policy for that particular layer three out, there's only one simple thing we need to do to complete the configuration here. And that's in the box that says PIM, we need to tick that box. Uh, it, it's not a box that we can set from MSO, so we have to do it from APIC. So I'll go ahead and click Submit and, and make that uh, happen. I need to do exactly the same thing in Barcelona, but since the steps are the same, I'm not going to show it, but assume that I've also enabled PIM in Barcelona as well. Okay, so what actually happens in the border leaf when we tick that PIM box on the layer 3 out? So here I am in the console of leaf 3. Now this is the border leaf in site Amsterdam that's you know terminating or, or having the, the layer 3 out and also acting as the fabric RP for site number 1. If I issue the command show IP PIM RP and we look at the output here, we can actually see that for VRF tenant brown V1, uh, we have a rendezvous point of 1.2.1.2, and we actually see that we have Fabric members. Who's that Fabric RP members? Well, it's this border leaf. If I go into the, the console of the border leaf in site number two in Barcelona, and I issue the same command, well, the output is the same, but I just wanted to show you that this leaf for the site Barcelona is also acting as the Fabric RP with the exact same address, and we can see it right here. There is one more thing that's worth checking on each of the rendezvous point leaves. So if I issue the command show IP interface brief 
VRF Brown V1, you can see here that I've got a loopback with the address of 1.2.1.2. This is a loopback that obviously gets created when I designate this leaf as my fabric RP. If we look at the leaf over in site 1 and we issue the same command, we can see again that a uh, loopback was created with the exact same address. So what this shows us is that this fabric RP is really an anycast RP address that lives equally in both sites. Okay, so all we need to do now is actually test and make sure that it is working. I do want to point out that um, in my earlier example of source-specific multicast, I was using a multicast range of 232 dot something. Uh, I just wanted to remind you that that is a reserved range for source-specific multicast. So in this particular test of using Fabric RP, I chose a different multicast address. And when you do your testing, just be on the lookout that you're not trying to use an SSM address for non-SSM duties. So I have my original uh, guy from the Stretch DPG here, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and start him listening at 228.1.1.1. And then I have another um, uh, listener from multicast living in site Barcelona will also listen to the same address and then here I actually have my source which happens to be a Windows uh, 8 machine and he will be the one sending the multicast frame so let's go ahead and start that happening and once I send that you can see that traffic is in fact being received by both speakers across different subnets uh, thereby proving just how easy it is to configure tenant routed multicast uh, with Fabric RP in multi-site orchestrator. So that concludes everything that I wanted to show you in tenant routed multicast and I will hand it back to Max for the next lecture in the series. Thank you very much. Thank you.